the DNA molecule and its language of life. The discovery of the information-bearing properties of DNA and RNA is a fundamental challenge to all materialistic theories of the origin of life. Neo-Darwinism and its associated theories of chemical evolution and the like will not be able to survive the biology of the information age, the biology of the 21st century. Meyer's conclusions are based upon his understanding of the DNA molecule and the genetic instructions that are locked within the nucleus of living cells. In 1953, when Watson and Crick elucidated the structure of the DNA molecule, they discovered that DNA was a carrier of genetic information in the form of a four-character digital code. That is to say that DNA functions like a software program, only more complex than any anyone has ever created or devised. For a biological system to run and operate, it needs genetic information to build the proteins and protein machines that cause the cells to maintain their function. This information is stored in a precise arrangement of four chemicals that scientists represent with the letters A, C, T, and G. Sequences of these chemicals provide the instructions necessary to assemble complex protein molecules that in turn help form structures as diverse as eyes, legs, wings, and hearts. This code has been called the language of life, and it is the most densely packed and elaborately detailed assembly of information in the known universe. Geneticist Michael Denton has estimated that the amount of biological information necessary to build all of the proteins in all of the species of organisms that have ever existed on planet Earth could be held in a single teaspoon. And we'd still have room left over for all of the information contained in every book ever written. The more I learned about DNA, the more I understood the significance of what Stephen Meyer called the most fundamental question facing biology today. Where did the information in DNA come from? How did it arise in the first place? Well, lots of people have wanted to explain the origin of information by reference to the laws of physics and chemistry or by reference to the chemical properties of the constituent parts of the DNA. But that would be like saying that you could explain the information in this morning's uh, New York Times headline by reference to the physics and chemistry of ink bonding to paper. There is a chemical explanation as to why the ink sticks to the paper, but that does not explain the way the ink got arranged to convey a message that could be understood by speakers of the English language. Information requires a material medium, but it transcends the material medium. An explanation for the origin of the genetic instructions needed to build the first life is the holy grail of 21st century biology. Theories proposing that this information arose through natural selection acting upon non-living molecules or the self-organizing power of chemicals in a primordial soup have repeatedly failed. Even time and blind chance, the oft-invoked saviors of implausible biological scenarios, have fallen far short as accounts for the source of the instructions in DNA. Mathematicians, for example, have calculated that a universe filled with monkeys, typing relentlessly throughout the oldest estimated age of the cosmos, would have no realistic chance of producing Shakespeare's play Hamlet let alone a transcript of the genetic information required to build even the simplest living cell. Based on our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning about the past, there is only one known cause for the origin of information, and that cause is intelligence. Whether we're looking at a hieroglyphic inscription, a section of text in a book, or a computer software, if you have information and you trace it back to its source, invariably you come to an intelligence. Therefore, when you find information inscribed along the backbone of the DNA molecule in the cell, the most rational inference based on our repeated experience is that an intelligence of some kind played a role in the origin of that information. According to a lot of the mainstream media, the theory of intelligent design is a faith-based idea. And in saying that, they want to dismiss it as something that has no basis in science. 
But the media has confused a fundamental issue. They're confusing the evidence for the theory with the implications of the theory. The theory of intelligent design may well have implications that are supportive of theistic belief, but the theory is not based on theistic belief. It's based on the discovery of digital code in cells, miniature machines in cells, the fine-tuning of the laws of physics and chemistry, and standard ways of scientific reasoning about the remote past in the history of life.